Hello Polygoners! I am Shaft, you are watching a Polygon Gaming a Daily Cast. We are continuing our Zerg vs Protoss today, and honestly the player I'm going to introduce here first, I think is one of the most cool, calm, and collected, not to mention one of the smartest players in StarCraft. He is playing for Root Gaming in the Red Trunks, it's Nero. And here on the bottom right hand side, his opponent and the blue Protoss trunks, it's Storm Blessed. Now, I don't know if that's an alias or anything, I didn't bother doing too much research on this guy, because really the player I want to talk most about is going to be Nero. Um, this is starting a little bit later into the game, I saw no reason really to show you guys the early game. It's a fast three base into a Stargate, little adept play early on. You can pretty much guess everything that has happened so far in this game. Here's a little quick look at the units lost tab. Nothing major, guys. Alright, so this is setting up. Got the Spore Crawler in the natural to deal with this Oracle. Oracle going to try and come around here and do a little Stasis Ward, block this out uh, before the Spore Crawler gets there, but nope, not going to happen. That one drone sets it off. Not an efficient use of energy, but the Oracle will, of course, regain that energy and get another opportunity to try. Third base going to be finishing up here shortly for Storm Blast who is now going for Twilight Council and Robo. So one issue uh, with opening Stargate, if you're not actually like planning on committing to it, is it's a lot of wasted gas and it delays from getting to your Robo. So we're gonna have a slightly later Robo. Nero actually sees the Forge. Nero has not really seen anything else. But anyways, uh, Zealot Legs on the way. So this will be Phoenix, a mortal Templar. Archon most likely um, and Nero can probably kind of figure that out like I said the Stargate first but only one Stargate is usually the biggest tell so if this overlord scouts anything ah, I want him to see this so bad but um this is why Koreans are typically going for overlord speed just so that they can get all the information now he does see the Twilight Council and I think that's huge so he's got the right amount of information but he's still trying to come in here with a uh, with the lings and he wanted to see back here we'll see if he actually saw it nothing so really good hiding here by storm blessed but again i think he already knows what's coming the banely nest of course going to be the answer to a high amount of adepts just in case that's coming he's got the banely nest he's got the lair working so uh, this is going to be your typical Ling Baneling Hydra. You see a lot of Zerg players doing this at the moment. Um, but of course, it doesn't have very much of a late game. I am a big pusher of Broodlords in the late game off of this style, particularly in this matchup, though I think it can work in Zerg vs. Terran as well. And uh, that's kind of where we're going to. Nero actually has multiple plans in this game that he abandons in favor of something else as opportunities arise and that's really what I want to make the focus of today's cast is just the ability to abandon what you were doing kind of like what he just did there abandoning the overlord path haha <laughs> you see what I did um no just kidding but uh basically um abandoning certain really awesome ideas which I'll highlight how awesome it was and get into his head and then just see him abandon it for something super slick and simple that his opponent opens up for him. We'll, we'll get more into that but you see the uh, the overlord speed definitely kicking in now it's like two and a half times faster don't don't double check that math please but it, it, it's a lot faster I like I like overlord speed uh, Oracle gonna be swinging in here once get a little revelation off on the hydrogen but these are mostly tells that each other could have already guessed they're just getting confirmation creeps red a little weak on this flank here for Nero we'll see if he remedies that here shortly but until this adept uh, or until these hydralisks finish um, Nero doesn't have to worry that much about an attack hydras are really the backbone everything else is just harassment so Ling's and mainlings gonna be swinging in um, he does see this fourth base Nice little wall off here. Archon going to be in position there. Cannon going down there. So, Nero yeah, just pulling a little bit of uh, the units towards him. He does want to get these Banelings wrapped around this corner here, but not going to be able to get in there. It is a full wall. Kills off some Adepts instead. No big deal there for him. Um, he didn't want to use the gas, but 
with Ling Bane Ling Muta, you just have to accept you're going to be losing gas at some point. Now, the Overseer has been popped, and uh, yeah, Overlord Speed going to allow that to get out of there. A little bit of harassment here in the form of a Warp Prism on the Hydrogen. Very smart to go ahead and target the Hydrogen. Does not actually hit the Transfuses here, and that means no Hydralisk production. So the Hydralisk production, which we had already talked about being the crooks of any of Nero's attacks, not going to be there uh, as necessary. Mothership Court going to go ahead and get out of here. So lots of attacks on lots of different fronts. That is the awesome part about the mid-game of something that starts off in a slow, like, three-base roll. Now you kind of see why we started or, or a little later. Anyways, Archon's on the way, got a plus two on the way, four cannons. This is totally getting into a macro game now. Oracle gonna fall to the small number of Hydralisks that are on the field, and we're gonna go ahead and knock the rocks down. Now, notice that Nero has not just preemptively made Banelings. So There's actually no, uh, what, well, how many Banelings? Like two Banelings on the field, actually. Um, this is because he wants to keep the gas free to respond to his opponent. You can see him floating around 800. He might need to make Hydralisks because he's just now, um, uh, getting uh, that Hydralisk den back up and restarting the upgrade, which got cancelled, by the way. So, at this point, we're going to go ahead and pause it. I don't typically do this in a daily cast, but I want to highlight something. This is Nero's plan. He wanted to attack around 9 to 11 minutes, ideally 10 minutes. Um, that's the Ling, Hydra, Baneling, mid-game kind of push, deny the fourth base type, type style. By Sniping the Hydra Den and canceling the upgrade, Storm Blessed knew he was going to be delaying this a little bit. Neuro also knows that. But he wants to attack this and then push in here. But while he's doing that, he's loaded up two Banelings, two Zerglings. Maybe could have got two more Zerglings in there or another Baneling. Um, and he's going to send this right along in here. So this attack is actually designed to pull the army towards Nero. Nero knows he's not going to kill this, but he doesn't want to lose too many lings. He also uh, uh, has to do some kind of damage. He knows he can't kill this base. But look, Storm Blessed definitely sees this army. It's revealed. The rocks are envisioned. Like everything's like clearly he knows this is coming. So his army's clearly going to be parked right here. Now, it's not that big of an army. But notice that there's no units over here. No units over here. I got the Mothership Corps. You got, what, a cannon? Yeah, that's not... Like, it's just a really small army, but it's got a good position. So Nero can't really knock that down. So what he's going to need to do instead is do little feints of harassment while setting up a base behind him. So... He wants it to look real, and of course, if the army here tries to pull back here, he can do some harassment here. That's part of the plan. But notice that he's also willing to abandon the plan, should he ever need to. So he's actually in position now, but there's a warp prism floating around in here. He doesn't see it yet. Let's actually switch over to his vision. Notice right in here. We've actually got this overlord. And now he sees that. He is already abandoning it on the minimap in favor of the harassment. So even though this drop had not finished yet, it didn't actually matter to him that much. Uh, he did go ahead and pull back. I don't I mean that was just a little bit of cleanup there. Nothing too major. I wanted to really pinpoint the the just the absolute willingness of Nero to adapt his style. That is that is definitely something to commend. Um, and you'll actually see him do this multiple times because now, you know, he wanted that 10 minute timing. Hydraling Baneling, that's what he was going for, but he lost the Hydra So now he's abandoning that and going for the Hive. Hive will allow him to get the Broodlord composition, which actually does do really well off Hydraling Baneling if you can get the Broodlords up. Now, um, the issue is really just not dying at this point. So he's going to walk here on the edge of the creep. He's got the Ling speed. He's got the Bane Ling speed. He's got Hydra range. He's got all these different upgrades he wants. He's only been getting plus two melee, which is definitely uh, going to favor his Broodlords later on. He just now finished plus one ranged attack, 
which of course is going to mean the hydralis kill stuff faster before they themselves die. Carapace not actually that useful in this matchup with this composition. Now, here we do. We will be having the first attack. Now slow it down just a little bit. Notice the queens are coming in. That was mostly going to be tra transfusing. He did not actually successfully pull that off, but I think that was just to buy time. Because notice that this army here is wrapping around. Now he's got the option to cut off um, this place, this place, or to go up here. Now it's really unlikely the Protoss is going to cut up there because, yeah, I mean, it's just not a good, good area. But basically the idea here is to cut everything off because, of course, Stormblust thinks this is the bulk of the army. So this drives it into this animal. It's pretty awesome. Now, Stormblast slightly beginning to realize maybe this isn't the whole army. Here comes the surround, so he's just parked here. Storms can't kill off everything with this big of a concave, as opposed to if he had just hit on Crete. So just taking that extra moment, letting that hatchery die, genius move here by Nero. And the storms go down, but of course, there's just too much stuff here. Hi, uh, more banelings rolling in, not having to use that gas. Very smart not to use that gas. The uh, hydras can go and kill off the sport prism. Boom, there it goes. And while all this is happening, we've got a little bit of a chase going on over here. Nothing too major. But notice that the hydraling baneling army is a mid field engagement army. You don't really see him trying to break into and siege a base. He got here, but he used that as a harassment point with actually this overlord here. So, utilizing the composition that you've chosen in the way it's intended is awesome. Or at least knowing the way it's typically used and how to do it. Um, you can always do something different, but you should know that it's different. Does that make sense? Like, you should know the rule before you start breaking it. So that's what I'm really loving out of Neuro's play, is you see the Adrenal Glands, you've got the plus three, and you've got the Greater Spire. He's even going for a Nidus Network, which doesn't actually work that well with Broodlords, unless you're using it to bring in queens to transfuse so this whole style like this early hive style because like this is a 10 minute hive 12 minute broodlord 13 minute broodlord this is pretty pretty insane you don't see this often all because the hydro is in that time love that kind of adaptation that ability to just abandon your play good storms killing off most of the ling bailing force but Hydra's on this edge, killing off a lot of the gateways. Now this army right here um, is, is now retreating onto the creep because that attack was never actually designed to kill a base. Killed an army. Killed uh, some, some of these cannons. It's just stopping Stormblast from ever reaching max. That's the goal. Then by hitting on multiple fronts, of course, Psy Storm's not as useful. It's never actually designed to get a monetary game or like even to kill a base a destructive game it's all positional notice that every time this happens he's just grabbing another base so it's four base against what one two three four five six bases this is pretty awesome right now for Nero again I just want to highlight how phenomenally uh, this guy's decision making can, can operate sometimes now of course goes ahead since a lot of these changelings sees the carriers uh, changelings still not utilized as much as I would like to see them but when you're a smart player like Nero having information means having a victory now we do have the Nidus Worm swinging in here with some lings and these are cracklings with plus three upgrades so they will be able to wreck see how quickly the Sardi is actually falling uh, it, it's really hard for Stormblast to bring his army in other than these carriers. But notice that this little harassment came first. It's giving him a chance to set this army up here. And yeah, there's some Archons here. But he is not expecting Broodlords. This is not an army that expects Broodlords. 
So he's just waiting, buying time. He's got the brood lords out of position, or the uh, the carriers out of position. Brood lords are pretty slow. Now the carriers are coming, but the brood lords are already taking down his base, getting down some of the static. Got to be very, very careful not to lose the banelings or the hydras. So he's just going to go ahead and pull those back. Now carriers, yes, they can kill off brood lords, but not that quickly. And the ground army for the Protoss is actually following. Falling very quickly as well. Remember how we talked about how uh, holding the ground is the pivotal um, thing in this matchup. Uh, that was a different video we did. Um, I think Nero was in that actually. I'm not 100% sure. But what it comes down to is in a war between carriers and broodlords, carriers can beat broodlords, but broodlords are better than carriers. Because, well, Look how fast this uh, this Nexus is dying, guys. And everything else, like the Hydras, just a, a few number of Hydras can come in and do everything else you need to to kill off the carriers. Only if it's a maxed army of carriers do you really have something to fear from a Protoss if you're going for Broodlords. So Nero making some amazing strategic decisions in this game. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit watching this. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this game. Whether you think going for Broodlords was the right thing considering he lost the Hydras and could not do that mid-game timing. Did he just catch his opponent off guard? Or is that going to be the next meta? You guys let me know. Until then, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.